on today's show, we head over to the UK for more action from the 2019 British Touring Car Championship. This week, the series returns to the fastest circuit on the tour, the Thruxton Circuit in Hampshire for rounds 19 to 21. Then we head across to France and to the Super Best Ski Resort for the final round of the 2018-19 Andros Trophy, the nation's premier ice racing series. And later in the show, we return to Australia and head to Calder Park Raceway for the latest instalment of the Aeroflow Outlaw Nitro Funny Cars. This is Speed Week. Colin Turkington took a win at Snetterton to cement his position at the top of the British Touring Car Championship. But there are still plenty of title contenders who could push their claim this weekend. The opening race at Snetterton saw Tom Ingram storm away from pole position, although he was slightly slower to react at the lights compared to front row rival Dan Kamish. Kamish tucked in behind Ingram, and with Tom Chilton in tow, the lead trio began to break away from Sam Tordoff and Colin Turkington. But it then became a two-car battle when the front left tyre on Chilton's car punctured through the high-speed Coran corner and he ploughed on into the tyre wall. No safety car was required, leaving the remainder of the 12-lap race as a sprint. Meanwhile, Andrew Jordan had made a late lunge on Jason Plato on lap 10 for fifth place, clattering over the kerbs at Nelson, before sealing the position on the inside through the bomb hole. Ingram would prove to be triumphant for his second victory of the season. Tom Ingram held on to pole position at the start of race two. But a slow getaway for Dan Kamish allowed a flying Colin Turkington to settle into second place on the inside at Ritchie's. Jordan also took advantage to move into fourth, with the leading pack edging away from Ollie Jackson. Kamish allowed Jordan through at Wilson, and from there he closed the one-second lead that Ingram and Turkington had pulled. The clear air for Jordan meant he could set the fastest lap of the race, and prompted Turkington to make his move for the lead. With a strong toe down the main straight, Turkington nudged Ingram into the Wilson hairpin. As Jordan tried to fire his car around the outside, Ingram moved over to cover the attack and in the process left the door open for Turkington, who claimed the lead. Jordan had to take to the grass as Ingram went wide, which promoted Kamish back up into second. At the flag, it was another win for series leader Turkington. Chris Smiley held the initial lead from pole position in race three before Jason Plato sneaked through in the box hall. Ash Sutton was soon into second and the Subaru driver immediately closed in on his old teammate Plato. The pair battled for what seemed like forever, swapping paint several times as the crowd collectively held its breath. Plato and Sutton went side by side on lap five before the latter eventually slipped through two laps later. Further contact followed and Plato's Astra recaptured the lead at Agostini. The chasing pack were closing behind with plenty of changes taking place as the likes of Butcher and Josh Cook had stormed their way through from 12th and 15th on the grid respectively. The race was building towards an exciting climax when Plato, Sutton and Butcher went three wide down the back straight. And that simply wouldn't work going into Brundles. A heart-stopping moment followed as Butcher carved his way down the inside of both. Plato was bumped wide and slid into Sutton Subaru. It was tipped into a spin as Plato also lost ground. And it was Butcher into the lead to take his second win of the season. 
Cook and Smiley were now in a comfortable second and third, respectively. Rob Collard and Jason Plato were fourth and fifth at the finish after the two-time champion let his teammate through late on. Team BMW's Colin Turkington continues to lead the standings, going into the next round at Thruxton. Sam Osborne's MG. Despite all the knocks they've taken, it's immaculate. Now, there is Jason. Well, I'd say that's fairly damning if, if I was the clerk of the course. Sorry, Jason. Let's see what comes. Round 19 is ready to go. Lights are red, lights out. We go racing. Good start by Tordoff, who gets the, the drop on Jason Plato. Down towards Allard. There's a motor base forward in the pit lane. You'll see Plato round the outside line. Gets his nose in front. Tordoff tries to brave it out on the run up towards the complex for the first time. Jordan goes ahead of Turkington. Jason Plato is ahead, but he's on the outside line. They dive now into the complex. Tordoff leads. Ingram goes way, way out wide. Absolutely side by side on the run through Allard up to the complex. Complex and positions the same, remain the same amongst the top four. Uh, Torn off a good start, good run through the first corner. Plato fighting it out, a little bit of contact maybe through the complex, off wide, uh, off wide, and couldn't see who that was. It looked like Nicholas Hamilton, I think, had gone wide. Tom Chilton started from the pit lane, we'll try and get to the bottom of wide. Torn off leads, Plato second. Third is Camish, fourth is Morgan, fifth is Cook, sixth is Oliphant. Look at the battle pack behind, Jordan staying ahead of Turkington. Ash Sutton is also in the mix as well. So too is Ollie Jackson, Matt Neal trying to carve a way through. You've got some big names in that midfield fight. Yeah, this was the only fear for, for Jordan and Turkington. Getting, oh, one of the... Oh, that was a big save there. Um, but there's a, a drive-through penalty for Plato. It's just come through to us. He has got a drive-through penalty for being outside of his pit box. But there was a lot of fighting between Sutton and the two BMWs. Matt Neal into the back of Proctor just coming into the chicane. And this is where the danger lies for Turkington and Jordan, getting mixed up in midfield battles. So Sam Tordoff leads the way. Plato is second. There is the drive-through penalty board. Will be a number, and it's Jason Plato and Jack Goff. Both drive through penalties for a false start, in other words, being out of position. So Jack Goff gets a penalty, he's 21st. Jason Plato from second gets a penalty as well. Good luck, anybody that goes near in post race. Yeah, I'm volunteering Louise for the interview. Yep. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it, you know, it's such a rookie mistake, isn't it? Jason's the most experienced yeah. guy. He gets his best qualifying position um, and he's blown it. And he's fallen foul of that before. You'd exactly. think he'd be in the, in, the, in the mind even more so. However, let us see what else comes from this race because right now it is Sam Tordoff leading the way. Dan Camish will be elevated into second place and Adam Morgan is all sideways coming under attack from Josh Cook. The Mercedes fending off the new shape Honda. Tom Oliphant runs sixth as they come now down towards the chicane. Is Jason going to get the message and bail this time? The same for Jack Goff. He will be absolutely steaming right on the back of Sam Tordoff. Does Plato come into the pit lane this time? Yes, he does. The air will be blue inside that car. Oh, you're not kidding. Um, he can get past his lap when he comes back out, um, all revved up after that, but he's going to lose a ton of positions. So it compromises this race, it compromises the grid for race two. Straight away, he's got to work towards race three and drama here in replay coming through the complex and we've got Mark Blundell on the outside of Carl Bordley and contact is made and Mark gets sort of shoveled off to the left. Right, Plato at the back of this shot look, he's got to come up against Mark Blundell, Sam Osborne, Nicholas Hamilton, Carl Bordley and pick his way through the traffic. And these are drivers that are less experienced in touring car terms, all having a fight. Jason does not want to get involved in any battles that's going to risk damage. He gets up the inside of Mark Blundell in the Audi. Mark makes a race of it for position, but Jason should be able to go through. Yeah, straight through. He's going to waste absolutely no time. Like I said, you can imagine how angry he is in the car, so he's not going to waste any time through here. Um, interesting seeing that slide of Adam Morgan's through Church on the, uh, the start of... Uh, uh, or the midway through that other lap, and he's clearly got the car a little bit oversteering, and straight through the chicane there. Goes Ollie Jackson fighting it out with uh, Stephen Jelly. Jelly back up the inside into Allard. 
And all of that's the 17th and 18th places just outside the points as they head to the complex. Uh, Tom Chilton, after his pit lane start, also still hustling on. He's down in 29th, though, so something not right with that Ford. And they've got Matt Simpson on the back of Holly Jackson now. Jack Goff going through in 30th place at the rear of the field. And up front, toured off to Camish, 7 tenths of a second. On board with uh, Andy Jordan, rear wheel drive, gets a good start, but Sutton closes the door. Turkington also in a rear wheel drive car just in front. And round the outside, threading the needle, goes Jordan right out to the grass. But it seems to work. He carries the momentum. Now he's going to be on the outside coming up to the complex. There's positions you can at least save here. You see Ingram running wide as through goes Smiley in front and Turkington on his right hand side. They're still side by side. Will they be through the final corner? coming out of uh, Seagrave and Turkington takes advantage of the blocking. Now watch, there was some contact coming through Noble and into Goodwood between Sutton and, and Turkington just ahead. Watch this, if we do, yeah, there's contact there. Turkington gets pushed wide and this is where Jordan gets back through on the both of them. So great racing and Andrew Jordan being able to dive through. There is Dan Camish ahead of the Mercedes of Adam Morgan. And the reason that Jason Plato was shown as having led a lap was because there's a transponder problem for Sam Tordoff. So it ah. took a while to put him back into the system. We've just had it again at the end of that previous lap, so the order was distorted for a moment. Tordoff to Camish. Uh, the gap has come down. Camish versus Morgan, that gap down as well. So it's building up nicely for the race lead. Jordan is still 10th going after Ingram. You're on board with Sutton 12th. That's Turkington ahead. Yeah, I'm still not sure the timing screen's right because it's showing one thousandth of a second between Tordoff and Kamish across the line, and we can see visibly the gap is, is quite different to that. It's actually Kamish coming on. Look, the gap is yeah, way absolutely. more than the, that, so we'll have to watch this. Oh, it's now changed again to a second. Yeah, that's a bit more like it. Um, so <laughs> treat the timing screens with caution, David. Um, but uh, Kamish with 30 kilos on has a tough job uh, to defend from Morgan with no weight. Now there, Sutton versus Matt Neal into the chicane. That's for 12th place. Look back, and Matt Neal on the hunt for the position as they come over the line at the end now of lap number six. The leaders go through. The gap now being shown is 11 tenths, which is a plausible one. Tordoff versus Camish. And Sam Tordoff trying to build that lead because Camish is busy defending from Morgan, who in turn has got Cook tucked up behind him. Yeah, so it was electrical problems that stemmed uh, Sam Tordoff's win here earlier this year in race one. Um, he saw a warning light, he switched everything off, he could do, the light went off, and then it came back two-thirds of the way into the race and affected his power steering, and that's what cost him the win. So for second place now, Adam Morgan is on the attack. Yeah, you can see the lighter car using less road than Kamish. Kamish is using all of the road to maintain his forward momentum, but uh, that's what 30 kilos does to you around here. And, uh, and Josh Cook behind them, he's got 36 kilos, so very similar to uh, Kamish. And that Mercedes just transformed, isn't it? I mean, it's back where we expected to see it. Yes, it's an old car, but so is this Honda, for example, of Rory Butcher battling with Chris Smiley in this contact, and Smiley gets all sideways into the chicane. They both skip it, whoops! Contact between the Bales and the Honda of Butcher. So that was drama for both of them coming into the braking zone. Neither prepared to give, both going off the road, but Butcher stays ahead. Yeah, the, the, no one gained an advantage there by them both going through the chicane. They were both literally trying to save the car from spinning. Um, and the order was the same coming out as it was coming in, except that Ingram has seized upon that opportunity to get right up behind them. Here they come, both just saving the spin and going through the gap in the chicane. We got Morgan up the inside. This is where we saw his car turning tighter before, and he'll get the same opportunity as they come through the next right hand at Goodwood. Watch Kamish's car run out wide. Morgan holds a tighter line on the exit. We'll see if he can get a run right up the inside on the way down to church. This is what he's trying to do, get alongside. But that Honda's quick, it carries good speed, and we saw at Snetton how good Kamish was at defending with weight on board. So Adam Morgan attacking, conscious that Josh Cook is right there behind him. Dan Kamish second then as they make the run up towards the chicane. Morgan trying to attack, but also keeping Cook at bay, all of which helps Tord off to maintain the advantage up front. Can Adam Morgan close sufficiently to have a go into the chicane? No, he can't. He's lost a little bit of ground, and he is still having to keep 
the new shape Honda of Josh Cook, the BTC Racing entry at bay. The leader goes through. Sam Tordoff looking a bit more comfortable now with 1.4 seconds in hand, but then Kamish, Morgan and Cook as one. Yeah, absolutely tied together. It was uh, Andy Jordan at Snetterton, wasn't it, in the light of BMW that Kamish held off, uh, despite the weight in uh, a race two, I think it was, at Snetterton. He's doing a, a similar job here. Tom Oliphant, the lead BMW in fifth, um, doing a good job as well. But then back to this battle with the championship protagonists. And uh, Neil is in front of Jordan now, look. Neil's got in front of Jordan. And this is how it all happened. So Matt Neal had been crawling all over the back of the BMW. Tom Ingram ahead, going towards Church. Ash Sutton through, ahead of Jordan. And that will have compromised Jordan on the apex of Church. And uh, Neal would have got through. Look at that Subaru, it's so slow on the straight, isn't it? And there goes Matt Neal, gets yeah. a toe from the BMW, and then has a go at the Subaru on the outside line. Nearly gets, uh, <laughs> nearly gets both of them. Exactly. Is Jordan staying ahead as they come to the complex? He is, but only just. Yeah, and on that last lap, Adam Morgan and Dan Kamish were both quicker than Sam Tordoff, weren't they? So, oh, somebody just getting on the grass on the exit of uh, Seagrave. Sutton it is. And he survives it, but he loses out to Matt Neal. So Matt Neal goes by, Ash Sutton loses ninth place. Yeah, that was Sutton trying to extract everything he can out of the corners and come out of the complex as fast as he possibly can. And uh, just just getting a wheel on the grass, had to lift out of it, and Neil was through. So now Ingram is the next one to try and hunt him down. Watch the cars through Church, the Subaru handling very well. Oh, a bit of a slide from, Tur uh, from Ingram's car. That'll cost him straight line speed on the run up Woodham Hill. Well, indeed, heading towards the chicane on this lap 12. There is Turkington still bearing down on Jordan as they now line up for the chicane. The leaders go through. Torn off Kamish Morgan Cook. The lead gap has gone up a little this time. Jordan closing on the Toyota Corolla there. Look, but also he's got his mirrors full of Turkington as they come across the line. Four laps to go now. Yeah, and you're right. That lead gap has closed up with Morgan the fastest by a couple of tenths on that last lap. Jason Plato's progress has brought him up into 19th place after the drive through. But out of the points, but uh, he's getting closer and closer to the points. And of course, every place gain helps the grid position for race two. Yeah, and I mean, Jason can really only focus on moving forward for race three yeah. now, can't he? Yeah, race three becomes the real focus. Matt Neal, nine, the other one to watch to see what further gains he can make before the end of this race. And of course, here, whether Colin Turkington can get ahead of Jordan, just take another point off him within that title fight. Tordoff leads the way. He's done the fastest lap of the race as well. Nine tenths he had in hand over Kamish, and the margin up in sector one, up fractionally in sector two. There is Tom Oliphant's BMW fifth, leading the rear wheel drive class here. Yeah, doing a good job. We haven't seen much of Tom Oliphant, but uh, his lap time's very competitive, an 18.2 on the last lap as opposed to an 18.3 for the leader. So Oliphant looking after his tyres, doing a strong drive. Chris Smiley there, riding the curve, it's getting slightly unsettled, and Matt Neal is closer as they come over the line, so the two different teams running the FK8 Honda Civic, BTC Racing here ahead of the Dynamic squad, Chris Smiley ahead of Matt Neal, further up the road though, their teammates, Kamish ahead of Cook, and between them is Morgan, so second, third and fourth they are, race leader is torn off the gap down again at the end of the previous lap, down to seven tenths between torn off and Kamish, but it's the older shape Honda still ahead. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, I don't want to jinx things or anything as we see a move up the inside, yet another position gained by Plato on Jelly. Um, but we don't, we don't think of the race being about potential punctures and things now. No. We used to see it years ago. Dunlop have really got on top of that. The current generation of uh, Sportmax tyre really copes with the, uh, the stresses and strains of uh, Thruxton very well. And uh, with the guidelines that, that, that uh, Dunlop give, which is a, a maximum front camera of three degrees and no more than a 10 degree spread across the tyre, as long as the drivers don't do curb strikes when the pressure's are low early, in the, in the race, they have a, you know, they should last the race with no problems at all. So hats off to Dunlop. Out of the chicane, leaps Rob Collard's Vauxhall. There, Smiley keeping Matt Neal at bay. The leaders go through, and we now start lap 15. Two to go, and it's half a second. Tored off to Kamish. Dan Kamish is having a red hot go as we get towards the business end of the race. Morgan is still there third 
the top three covered by just over eight tenths. But now, look, because Morgan arrives on the back of Kamish, they start fighting. That helps Tord off a little bit more. Yeah, I think there are sort of strengths and weaknesses through the complex, the change of direction, the, the slow down, accelerating. The heavier car, i.e. Kamish's one, is the one that suffers the most. Around the back, Kamish gets up to speed. But as you say, tiny difference between the three of them over the last lap. And uh, Tornoff lost a, a few tenths of a second. And once again, it was Morgan with the fastest lap time. Morgan again tries to get up the inside, heading towards Church. He's tried this before, but it's where Kamish is strong. Their squabble enables Tordoff to get away. So can Sam Tordoff finally take an overview win this season? It's looking more and more likely. Josh Cook closing up as well. They're in fourth as they head towards the chicane. But here, look, Kamish just extends the margin slightly over Morgan. Yeah, as I said, through the fast bit, through Church and up the straight. So Kamish is very quick. And this is as close as he gets to uh, uh, Tordoff at any point on the lap. Battle lower down there. Look, Jack Goff behind Rob Smith. Jack, another XMG racer. Rob Smith, the first third generation driver in the BTCC's history, and he loses the spot. Jack Goff goes through into 24th. Ollie Jackson versus Jake Hill as they come up towards the timing line now. Uh, Jackson's got ahead of Jake into the points, into 15th place. Final lap now. The leaders uh, well round the back, and once again, Tordoff has got that nice little cushion. It'll mean he won't have to panic approaching the chicane on the final lap. He can uh, spot his breaking point and do it easily. Not quite so comfortable for Kamish. He needs to get the next section absolutely right. He needs to be really quick through Church without any drama to give him that speed up uh, the Woodham Hill. If he makes any kind of mistake through this corner, Morgan may pounce. Through they turn. Half a lap to go. Sam Tordoff's last win, Silverstone last season. And this has been a long time coming. Kamish looking as though he's going to be able to hang on to second. It's Morgan third. Josh Cook at his home circuit just off the podium. But four different teams across the top four. Down they come. It's very Honda. The lone Mercedes in the mix as well. And then Tom Oliphant first of the rear wheel drive. Drivers in fifth as Sam Tordoff heads up towards the checkered flag and he wins race one here at Thruxton. Sam Tordoff takes the chequered flag, four tenths clear of Dan Kamish, and a Morgan third. He'll be very pleased with that. <laughs> Round 19 of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship won here at Thruxton by Sam Tordoff with Dan Kamish second, Adam Morgan third. From Josh Cook, Tom Oliphant and Rob Collard in sixth place. Rory Butcher seventh, great drive up to eighth by Matt Neal ahead of Ash Sutton, and then Chris Smiley rounding out the top ten. For the championship, Colin Turkington, 35 points ahead now of Andrew Jordan. Rory Butcher is up to third. Dan Kamish, fourth, ahead of Josh Cook. Ash Sutton, sixth, from Tom Ingram and Matt Neal. Sam Tordoff is ninth and tenth, is Jason Plato. Still to come, more British Touring Car Championship action from Thruxton. Welcome back, let's return to Thruxton and the British Touring Car Championship. Um, noticeably well back from the line this time, Jason Plato. <laughs> He's a taxi ride from it this time. Uh, there you've got the last couple of cars to the grid. Carl Bordley will complete the 30 strong order, which stretches all the way back to the chicane. The green flag says that everybody is now back from that formation lap. We get set for round 20 of the Quick Fix British Touring Car Championship. It is go, and a good start made by Tordoff and by Jordan and by Turkington. Oliphant tries to squeeze between Morgan and Cook. He's got ahead of the Honda, he's not got ahead of the Mercedes. And Tordoff, despite the weight, has made a really good start. Morgan is second, and Oliphant is right there behind him. There's Collard trying to go with them as well as they break for the complex. Cook goes round the outside. Back up into third at the expense of Oliphant. Now Collard gets up the inside of the BMW as well, and through he goes. Absolutely great start by Tordoff. His car just rocketed off the off the line. Fellow front row starter Kamish got a terrible start. The car bogged down, he dipped the clutch, then the wheel span, and he's dropped back several places. 
So work to be done for Dan Cam as the leaders head up now for the first time out of Goodwood on towards Village. And there is Tordoff leading Morgan, leading Cook third in fourth is Collard, fifth Oliphant, sixth then is Camish, and seventh is Rory Butcher. Sam Osborne at the rear of the pack, riding on board now with Andrew Jordan. And Matt Neal is ahead as the cars come through Church, speed building, building, building all the time. Matt Neal's on the attack. Gets up alongside Ash Sutton, gets ahead of Ash Sutton. Oh, I'll have a bit of that, says Jordan. And the BMW dives past as well. Up Woodham Hill, into the chicane. Turkington is there, Ingram's up the inside of one, nearly of two, but Ingram dive bombs the BMW and he gains a place. Wow, Ingram arrived there. I thought he was never going to stop the car, but boy, what a great move on lap one. Uh, so destroying if you're Ash Sutton, because they just drove past him on the straight, didn't they? Absolutely. Great move then by the Toyota Corolla, but there the Honda Civic of Sam Tordoff leading at the end of that one by 0.8 of a second. It is Morgan in second spot, it is Cook third, fourth is Collard, and then Tom Oliphant in fifth place. Now this is Ash Sutton, he's down in tenth and he'd like a place back from AJ. Yeah, just look, he's all over the back of AJ as they come through the complex. As they open the taps up, get to the high speed section, the BMW moves away. A lot of movement on the cars there coming through Noble. Remember, that's the only fast left hander, so the right hand rear tyre is the coldest tyre, so you have to be a little careful lap one or two, although it's warm and the tyres come up to temperature very quickly. Top three, concertinaing because Cook closing on Morgan, who was also quicker slightly than the leader in the first sector. Here they come up the hill then. Collard in fourth at his home circuit, don't forget. And as they break for the chicane, Morgan gets a toe, closes right up onto the back of the Honda. So it is Tordoff looking for a double, Morgan looking for a first win of the season, and then Josh Cook looking for win number three of 2019. That's the top three, all front wheel drive as they come across the line. The Plato progress, he was 16th at the end of lap one. The leaders go through Allard, and it's now half a second covering the top three with Josh Cook there, having done the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, Josh Cook's sitting in a good place at the moment. He'll be pretty happy with where he is. Um, he'll, obviously, it takes a few laps for the, uh, the, the goodness of the new tyres that are on the, uh, tour, the heavier cars, Tord off and Morgan, before that takes effect. The weight just, they can mask the weight with the new tyres for a few laps, but then it really starts to hurt. Battles lower down, so the Proctor goes through. Rob Smith versus Carl Bordley versus Mark Blundell. Nicholas Hamilton is there. Sam Osborne at the back of the pack as well. Bordley stays ahead of Blundell as they go through Noble, and now Mark under attack from Hamilton. Yeah, Mark seemed to lose a lot of speed through that uh, right-hander there, didn't he? He was right on the back of Bordley. Look, yeah. he suddenly lost a, a chunk of distance, and Hamilton's all over him. Maybe something wrong with that car, I'm not sure. You're right, he's not being able to retaliate at all. This is for the lead. Cook's on the attack against Morgan. So side by side for second place as they dive down towards the chicane. And it's Tord off that stays ahead as they wriggle their way through the right, the left, the right, and then up towards the timing line. But Tord off is still there. Morgan is still second. And third remains Josh Cook as the cars go past the pits once more, down towards Allard. Local boy Rob Collard in fourth place. He'll be loving this scrap up front. Just what he needs to get hooked up onto the lead group into the complex, three as one. It was 0.3 of a second covering the leading three cars last time, but go all the way back to the end of the top 10. It's only 3.7 seconds covering all of them. So now perhaps Morgan in the lighter Mercedes, Cook in the even lighter again Honda, are getting a bit more frustrated. They want to get past the Honda and try to get away before the traffic behind comes up to attack them. Wow, Adam Morgan. This is what I love about, uh, about Brunch. If you watch that back, Adam Morgan hooked a wheel over the kerb on the left-hander at Mercedes. The car twitched violently. And this is a 120-odd miles an hour. A great car control. Great to see the cars on the limit. On board with Andrew Jordan now as they come through church. That is Matt Neal ahead, so eighth and ninth, and very wide ahead uh, was going Rory Butcher as it's three wide for the race lead. Cook goes through. Morgan was second. He stays second, so third to first for Josh Cook. Brilliant with a toe round the outside, and the BTC Racing Honda leads up towards the end now of lap number four. Great move. Adam Morgan stays second, and down to third slips Sam Tordoff. Now, can Cook get away? Yeah, I think he can, actually. That was a great move. Um, he went one side, Adam Morgan went the other, but he was marginally in front when they got to the braking area. Adam Morgan thought about having a go, but he's so pleased with being at the front. I don't think he wants to risk anything today. Absolutely, he was 
quote, chuffed a bit after race one. And he comes then now up towards Noble, but Josh Cook, whose car is slightly lighter with the success ballast, just edging away. And this is how it all started. Yeah, big moment for Tordoff. You saw the car sliding. That lost in momentum coming off the corner. Morgan was probably so close, he didn't get the maximum run off it. But the man who did was Cook, who went all the way around the outside. So on board with Kamish, he is sixth. And have we had a change up the road? Yes, we seem to have done. Oliphant is ahead of Collard, and now Oliphant goes for a podium against Tordoff. But he can't find a way through. Tordoff locks up, comes into the chicane, and look at the line behind, because there is Tordoff, Oliphant, Collard, Kamish, Neil, Jordan, Sun. On it goes, on it goes, as they wriggle their way through. Only really after uh, Ingram do you get to a, a bit of a gap as they come over the timing line now. Smiley getting through on the inside of Ollie Jackson uh, with Plato right up behind trying to make pro progress. Plato crossed the line in 15. Yeah, Smiley trying to stay ahead of Jackson, just about doing so. Plato up the inside of the Ford and there's a lean and Jackson goes wide and Chilton gets past both of them. So one up and one down for Jason. Yeah, that didn't work for Jason. I think the cars got a bit locked together there on the brakes, didn't they? And uh, they couldn't stop them in time. This is Jordan's view, coming out of church, Camish ahead. And again, lots of different strengths and weaknesses between the different shapes of cars. Some quicker in a straight... Oh, Proctor's had an off. He has. Uh, has he collected something or has he just gone off on the grass? He looks like he's fired the engine up and will be moving again, so hopefully just a spin. But yeah, different strengths and weaknesses of the cars, especially for um, obvious round this circuit, which just shows all the different uh, skills and uh, deficits of each car. Here's Senna Proctor's explanation up the inside of Jack Goff and Moffat there as well. Was there contact between the Infinity and the Subaru? Well, either way, Senna Proctor spat out of the battle and has a big spin and falls to 30th place. Moffat's dropped down a little bit, I'm afraid, into 27 behind Mark Blundell. So Josh Cook still leads the way. We're on lap 10 of 16 here at Thruxton. It's round 20 of the British Touring Car Championship, and there Adam Morgan goes through in second. And Tordoff still resolutely hangs on to that third place. Look at the queue behind him, but he will not budge. He's doing a great job, a really solid job, Tordoff. Look how much he's having to fight that car. Yeah. And it just slows you down coming off the corner. Oliphant's got a nice run, but we know how good that Honda is on brakes. See who brakes first. Look, Oliphant brake first on the outside. We saw the front of the car dip, and, uh, and Tordoff was able to keep that position. Out of the chicane they come, up towards the timing line. So Tordoff hangs on to third. Yes, he's dropping away from the top two, but yes, he's hanging on to a podium finish. Frustrating Oliphant, who started fifth on the grid. He runs fourth there, having got past Collard. Matt Neal is sixth. Now, what further progress, if any, can he make? Chilton's up to 13. Moffat's ahead of Blundell. All of this going on for 26th place. The Infinity, after race one, doesn't look as good in race two, for whatever reason. Up towards the line comes Aidan Moffat now, but we are on lap 11, and there, Oliphant versus Tordoff coming out of Seagrave up towards Noble. Tordoff will have the inside line for the next corner. Oliphant tries to go around the outside of him. He'll be on the inside for the next right at Goodwood. He should go through. Will he, will he, will he? Yes, Oliphant through. Collard has got the line as well to follow him. Tordoff hung out to dry on the outside line, so the Vauxhall Astra comes up to have a go. Then Matt Neal dives to the inside as well, and that's Sutton having a big, big, big moment, but he saved that well. <laughs> So uh, it finally happened that Tordoff got pushed out wide and look, Collard and uh, Neil and Kamish and Jordan all coming through. They're all going to get him in one go. Down to the chicane they come. Collard is losing out against the, bot the uh, Hondas as well, isn't he? Jordan's going to have a go at the Astra. So at the end of the lap, it will be Cook from Morgan, twas ever thus. But up into third is now Tom Oliphant. And one big deep breath later, Matt Neal's fourth, Kamish fifth, Collard is sixth, Jordan is seventh, eighth is Tordoff, ninth is Ingram, 10th is Turkington, and then 11th is Butcher as they dive through Allard. This was Sutton's moment. He got out wide, full lock. He, had to, he actually hit the brakes because he thought he was going to spin. Um, it actually corrected him, but he thought he was going off. Smiley having another sideways moment. There was a, a Plato-looking Astra behind that, oh. which might have been involved. Oh. The leaders go by, and the gap down by a tenth on that last lap. Adam Morgan a little bit nearer to Josh Cook, perhaps driving within himself. But look at the gap the top two has pulled over the rest, thanks to Tordoff holding them up for so long. Yeah, you're right. They managed to get away at the right time, didn't they? 
Judge looking at the gap in the performance of Neil and Oliphant. Neil was uh, uh, four tenths of a second quicker than Oliphant. So Neil is the one on the march after Oliphant. Plato versus Sutton, part two, and they come to blows. And the Subaru gets forced wide, and Ash didn't like that, so he's going to lean on the Vauxhall. And now he will be ahead once more. But the battle from Snetterton is certainly not over. <laughs> and he managed to uh, take Chilton through with him as well, yes. which will make him doubly pleased. <laughs> exactly right. So <laughs> Chilton gains 13 from Jason Plato. And the Subaru looking a bit dog-eared, a bit battle-scarred, hanging on for the moment to 12th position. We are on lap 14 of 16 here. This race has gone past very quickly, hasn't it? It's been an interesting race. Now, there oh, you this go. Was, this, was, uh, this was Plato and Sutton, and Sutton was having none of it this time. Plato leaning on him on the way in, and Sutton saying, I'm not having any of that this time. Out of the chicane. There, look, you've got Butcher versus Tordoff. Have they had a change between them? I think they have. Rory Butcher going ahead now. Right with them is Ash Sutton as they come across the line. The two AMD Hondas go side by side. Tordoff goes back ahead, diving into Allard. But now Sutton wants to try to gain a place, at least one place, out of that as well. Yeah, and I think he probably will get it as well. Watch to see if he goes to the outside. Yes, he does. Great failure overtaking place for him. He can squirt the car between the two corners. Sort off as try as he might to hang on, there's no way he can. We're on the last lap then, and everybody fighting as best they can for points, for positions, and in some cases, pole position for the final race. But Josh Cook and Adam Morgan well clear up front. Great drive by both, and look at Matt Neal. He's creeping up onto the back of Oliphant. He's going to run out of time, possibly, but as ever around here, Matt is throwing everything at him. This is for the final podium position, so it means a lot to both drivers. Wow, those cars look good coming through. Church, Turkington on the back of Ingram as well. But this man has driven a perfect, perfect race. Congratulations, Josh Cook. Checkered flag at the ready. Round 20 of the British Touring Car Championship is a third win of the season for Josh Cook for BTC Racing. Adam Morgan takes second. And third, Matt Neal has done it. He's ahead of Tom Oliphant on the drag to the line, but the BMW fights back. Matt Neal's nose was just in front, and he got the place by eight hundredths of a second and another virtual dead heat there because Tordoff and Sutton came through with Tordoff 94 thousandths ahead of Ash Sutton. But Matt Neal did it through the chicane on the last lap. Last podium place for Matt Neal. Great stuff. Josh Cook, winner of round 20 of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship. Adam Morgan, second, his best finish of the season with Matt Neal taking third. Tom Oliver, fourth, ahead of Dan Camish and then Rob Collard with Andrew Jordan, seventh, Tom Ingram, eighth, Colin Turkington, ninth, and Sam Tordoff in tenth place. For the championship, the gap a little bit smaller. Turkington leads Jordan, 33 points now, magic number. Josh Cook, back up to third, ahead of Dan Camish. Rory Butcher, fifth from Ash Sutton and then Tom Ingram. Matt Neal is eighth, Sam Tordoff's ninth, and Jason Plato rounds out the top ten. Coming up next, it's more British touring cars from Thruxton. Welcome back for more British touring cars from Thruxton. So he can be a race winner from the outside of row one, but you've got Tom Oliphant wanting a win, you've got Matt Neal wanting a win, because he's not been victorious this year, and Rory Butcher has got a problem. He's stopped on this green flag lap. He should have been 14 on the grid. And it's round 21 of the Quick Fit British Touring Car Championship. It's a 15-lap race now. That's the championship situation. Josh Cook back in the mix, of course, getting a little bit closer to the BMWs, but Colin Turkington still with his uh, good advantage. The back row of the grid is going to be Senna Proctor and Carl Bordley. There you've got Sam Osborne's MG as he uh, comes through the chicane. And there is Dan Camish, who certainly is not going to be uh, the wrong side of the line. He's almost a long way back from it, not close enough. Yeah, well, that's the that's obviously the place where Plato got penalised, Camish got penalised earlier this year. He does want to make the same mistake. Lights are red, the last race of the day is go. Who makes the best start? Good getaway by Jordan. Good getaway by Oliphant. Bad start relatively by Camish. And look at the way Jordan goes. Elbows out through the middle of Matt Neal and Adam Morgan. 
Collard leads the way. Tom Oliphant is second. Matt Neal will be out on the inside to try to flag more places as they break for the complex. It's Camish third. And there's drama in the background because they're going really wide is Sam Tordoff. They scrabble their way through the complex for the first time. Ingram gets run out wide. He's alongside Jordan. He's on the inside of the BMW. He's up the curb. Here comes Sutton. The Subaru to the inside of the Toyota. Where's the BMW? That's hung out to dry as well. They're three wide up towards Noble. Ingram and Jordan leaning on each other. Josh Cook is behind them. All action as they head towards Goodwood for the first time. Oh, that mid-pack is so dangerous, isn't it? At this first lap, going round the fast corners on slightly cold tyres as well. Great start by Collard, and predictably the uh, uh, the rear-wheel drive BMW up to second. Josh Cook getting alongside Andrew Jordan. Ingram's up and past and gone as the cars come through Church for the first time. And he's Collard ahead then in the Astra. Second is Tom Oliphant. And look at this, everybody streaming through. Moffat on the attack against Chris Smiley. Down to the chicane at the end of lap one. Oliphant is under attack then as he breaks for the chicane because right there behind him is Dan Kamish in third. Matt Neal's up to fourth. Adam Morgan is down to fifth. Sutton is sixth. Ingram is seventh. Off the road and back on again goes Chilton. And he might not be the only one in strife at the chicane as the rest wriggle by. But Collard leads Oliphant by three tenths. Collard the race leader. Oliphant second. Cam Kamish start to make a move against the BMW. Remember, Oliphant with 36 kilos, Kamish with 30, 24 on the Astra of Collard, thanks to their results in race two. And it's three for the lead, then, as they dive into the chicane. Sutton's up the inside of Ingram, there's tyre smoke, the Subaru is ahead, they're both off the road, they're both back on in the same order, but Ash Sutton it is, then, who is ahead in sixth place. Ingram right there behind him, Josh Cook crawling all over the back of the pair of them. Jordan is ahead of Turkington, but only just. They'll go through Allard as one now, those two BMWs. Yeah, they are. Sutton is absolutely charging. He's got his elbows out at this race. Into the complex they go. Sutton's up the kerb. Cook goes round the outside of Ingram. Cook has a go at his mate, Ash Sutton. He's on the inside line, but the Subaru is ahead of the Honda. But there, Cook goes ahead of the Toyota. One or two spots of rain on the camera lens as well. Cook ahead of Ingram. Ingram fights back. Yeah, side by side, coming up to Noble, the flat out left hander, clipping the curb, just the tiniest touch here, and you could be a, you know, have a big spin. But uh, they managed to race inches apart, 120 plus miles an hour without contact. It's great stuff, isn't it? As they come now through that long, fast rise of village onto Church. Up front, it is still Collard who has the race lead, but Josh Cook, eighth, has the fastest lap of the race, thanks to a tow. Matt Neal under attack now from Adam Morgan. This is for fourth and fifth places, and for second, here comes Camish on the outside line. He goes ahead of Oliphant under braking. Can he get the move done? Yes, he can. Dan Camish goes up to second. It's still Collard in the lead, but Camish now is on a mission, and there's more drama for Ingram and for Cook. <laughs> Any line you care, they come out the other side, and it is still just the Toyota ahead. And this is Ingram versus Cook from a lap ago. Josh up the inside, up the kerb, leans on the Toyota, Ingram one side, Cook the other. <laughs> Well, I mean, Ingram had no choice but to go across the inside there because you can't just fight it out and drive into a stack of tyres. You've no. got to make a decision fairly quickly what you're going to do. So we're on lap four of 15. Plenty more drama to come. There is the championship fight. Jordan again ahead of Turkington as they turn now through the right of church. One or two more spots of rain here compared to the start line side of the circuit. But up front, Collard to Camish the gap half a second at the start of this lap. There's Jason Plato getting in on the act now against the BMWs. So look at Turkington. He just stalked Jordan all day. But round the outside, Plato knows that Turkington won't fight it. He's going to lose another place, probably to Tordoff on the exit. Um, you know, this is where it could go wrong for, uh, for Turkington, trying to be clever, trying to just keep place with uh, Jordan. But everyone else with nothing to lose will muscle him out. Collard having to be careful, he wants to push, but he can't push too hard and suddenly find the grip level is not what he was anticipating and skate off the road. This is Kamish's view and he's closing, closing, closing all the way through Goodwood. Yep, the Honda possibly a little bit quicker in a straight line. We've heard Plato saying that that, uh, that Vauxhall isn't, its strength is not in a straight line, but with the slippery FK8 Honda does go quick in a straight line. So Kamish needs a really good run through Church on one lap to get on the back. 
Fastest lap is a 17 from Jason Plato. They're in the 18s at the moment, so the lap times are going up a little. Here comes Kamish. This is going to be a move, is it? He goes to the outside line. It's his first serious bid. Can he get his nose in front? No, he can't. Collard will lead, but Kamish has certainly served intent now. Yeah, he has. That was... Uh, he just didn't get up alongside early enough. He needs a little mistake at church from Collard or something to help him to get a little bit further up. We're on lap 10 of 15, and they are closer at this point than we've seen for a few laps. So Kamish again, mounting the attack early. Yeah, it's going to come sooner or later. Um, Kamish is very good at looking after his tyres, so perhaps at this stage of the race he's got a bit extra, or maybe he's been waiting till near the, the end of the race before he made a big push. Collard quick through good, good with there, isn't he? Yeah. Carried good speed there. We know Rob's brave, and it's, uh, again, proving the point there. In second place is Kamish, and the gap has grown, which means that as soon as Dan starts to try to make that move for the chicane, he's got to make up the lost ground first. Oh, big moment from Collard. He must have lost some momentum there. Must have done. So here is Kamish, and this is the chance. He goes to the outside line once again, but Collard can't cover him off on this lap. Kamish is ahead as they come into the chicane. New race leader, Dan Kamish, has done it. It all started way back at church. It finishes at the chicane. The Dynamics team delighted, and Dan Kamish leads the Away then as they come out of the chicane. Collard is second, under attack from Oliphant, flashing the lights. Matt Neal is fourth, and now Kamish will try to break clear. Uh, black and uh, black and uh, orange mechanical warning flag once again for Carl Bordley. Remember in the last race he had that loose bonnet, but now he's getting it again. Got a change for sixth, it's up to sixth for Tom Ingram. Also, Jason Plato's up into ninth, and Collard is really under attack now from Oliphant. Look how close they are. Yeah, Collard was struggling to hold a tight line coming through the first part of the complex. Oh, Whoa. side by side, Sutton and Ingram on the grass. And that means Josh Cook gets past both of them. And Tom Ingram has lost one, he's lost two, he's about to lose a third place as well as Plato goes around the outside. You can see the damage to the Toyota. Plato goes through, and Ingram drops back after that skirmish with Sutton. We didn't see the start of it, but the outcome was that Ingram was hung out on the grass, and that really has compromised him. So Sutton versus Ingram, perhaps a little scrappy, but uh, Jason taking advantage of the gap. Josh Cook, of course, also taking advantage. He leapt up into sixth place, and Cook and Sutton, as we know, are good mates, so uh, Josh will have enjoyed that, getting one over on Ash. So the Honda is ahead of the Subaru, the Vauxhall not quite close enough, actually, as yet, to think about making a move. Uh, we're on that 12 of 15, as Matt Neal is under attack still from Adam Morgan. This is another race that's flown by, and it's not done yet, as Ash Sutton gets up the inside of Josh Cook. Up the curb, leans a little on the Honda. I'm coming through, says Ash Sutton. No, you're not, says Josh Cook. They're still side by side. Can the Honda stay ahead? Remember, that's got 54 kilos of weight on board, and the Subaru goes through on the inside. And here comes Plato as well. Oh, they're side by side. Three cars side by side through Church Corner. And look at the way the Subaru drops back with all the weight. Cook stays ahead. Plato goes ahead. Ingram's round the outside. Sutton tumbles down the order, and Plato gets past the lot of them into the chicane. Fantastic. He goes sixth. And Sutton and Ingram are still at it. They're still side by side. Sutton whacks the tar stack coming out of the chicane. They're still side by side, and now Chilton and Jordan get in on the act, and so does Turkington, and so and does Tordoff, and the rain is the falling. The rain is pouring down. Look at the screen. The race is pouring down. This is really going to change it. Oh, wow. Now, look, it's absolutely tipping down. They're all on slick. That's Chilton. is sideways as he saved it. Now it's about survival. The clerk of the course will keep an eye to this because they're on the wrong tyre for the conditions now. Does he intervene, or does he make the drivers think about this and just drive safely and conservatively? We're on that 13 of 15. I hope it goes the distance. Let's see what happens then as the cars come on their slick tyres through Goodwood. Change there, because that's Matt Neal ahead of Tom Oliphant. That's Matt Neal into third place. And now it's about surviving in these conditions. So, for the moment, the clerk of the course, Ian Watson and Dave White, his deputy, prepared to let them carry on racing. As Tim rightly says, they've got the temperature in the tyres, but Dan Kamish, I think, will be delighted to get to the end of this race, especially if he hangs on to the race lead. He's driving very, very well at the moment. There is Collard, dropping back second. Matt Neal, third. Morgan, fourth, on the prowl. Fifth is Oliphant. Plato is sixth. Cook, seventh. Eighth, Sutton. Ninth, Ingram. Jordan up to tenth. And the drama just keeps on coming, doesn't it? Well, they got one more lap to survive. Kamish has got a little bit of a, a, a buffer. He's, he can just ease off a tenth or so on each corner. But 
next time round are on the start finish line and round the first section of the track is going to be absolutely treacherous. Down they come into the chicane. There you've got Plato on the back of Oliford. Josh Cook is right with him. So it's going to be one lap to go now for Camish as he goes over the line. There is the rain. They're all on slicks. They're all trying to survive. It's a bit drier here. Camish leads the way by 1.7 seconds. The gap's going up. Yeah, so far it's OK, but you do want to be careful. He's avoiding the curbs. He's doing everything he possibly can to get this first win. Remember, he had two wins at the last two races at Brands Hatch last year, but no wins so far this year. So Camish, Collard, Neil, the top three going on to this last lap. There is Plato, who is now ahead of Oliphant, so that gives him fifth. And Josh Cook goes ahead. Tom Oliphant's going backwards, I'm afraid, in these conditions. So Josh Cook goes through as well. That puts him up into sixth spot. And the BMW is struggling. The rear-wheel drive car is struggling, whereas uh, Jordan and Turkington have made places, in fact, over the last lap. There is Sutton Subaru under attack from the... Speedworks Toyota Corolla of Tom Ingram, and that battle is not done yet either. Here comes Ingram once more on the inside. Yeah, I thought uh, Sutton would go up the, the order, but uh, he's not gone uh, as quickly as I'd have thought, and, and, and Ingram's through. Toyota goes ahead then on this, the last lap. Uh, look in the background as well, there's Tordoff on a mission. But in the rain on slicks, a first win of the season beckons for Dan Camish, who comes out of the chicane. He will breathe a massive sigh of relief, a third touring car career win. Dan Camish wins at Thruxton. He takes the race win in appalling conditions. Second goes the way of Rob Collard. It's Matt Neal for third ahead of Adam Morgan. Then fifth, Jason Plato, sixth to Josh Cook, seventh, Tom Oliphant, Ingram is eighth, Ash Sutton ninth, and Andrew Jordan takes tenth. That's the first win of the season for Team Dynamics. It's been a long time coming. The team celebrates. Well done, Dan Camish, because in those conditions, that was a real challenge. A race win for Dan Camish, his first of the season in round 21 of the British Touring Car Championship, ahead of Rob Collard, with Matt Neal on the podium in third. Fourth for Adam Morgan, ahead of Jason Plato, fifth. Josh Cook taking points off the BMW drivers again. He's sixth, ahead of Tom Oliphant, seventh. Tom Ingram, eighth, ahead of Ash Sutton. And then Andrew Jordan in tenth. So what does all that do to the championship? It's 30 points between Colin Turkington and Andrew Jordan. Dan Camish up to third ahead of Josh Cook, but only four points between them. Rory Butcher down to fifth, not starting that last race of the day. Ash Sutton is sixth ahead of Matt Neal and Tom Ingram. Sam Tordoff ninth and Jason Plato is tenth, with the next stop being Knock Hill. Next time out, the series is at Knock Hill in Scotland. Coming up after the break, we head over to the super best ski resort in the heart of France for the final round of the 2018-19 Andros Trophy.